picking it out. Uh, I think it's when you're able with on ABC interviewing uh, Bear Bryant on the sideline. Yeah, yeah. And he said, oh, "We're playing like we're afraid we're going to hurt somebody." And you're like, "Thank you, Coach." <laughs> you got a great memory. Uh, yeah, that was that was in '81, uh, and I was still at ABC. I I had not yet gotten the dread call of we're going to move in a different direction, but it was coming, and that was the '81 Iron Bowl, and Bear was Bear was uh, going after his 312th victory in that game. And this was when uh, 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 Amos Alonzo Stagg, one of the legendary coaches in the early 20th century, <coughs> he had the record. And two things, two memories come, come out. They signed me to sidelines. And they wanted somebody, uh, Steve Davis, who was a, another former partner of mine, uh, Steve is no U quarterback. Uh, we lost him tragically in a private jet crash about seven years ago. But mm -hmm. they had Steve on, but he was not, he was an All American quarterback at OU, but he wasn't an accomplished radio television guy at the time. So Chuck Howard, the executive producer at ABC, called me and said, We want you to go and do the interview uh, with Coach Bryant if he wins. And uh, uh, Keith Jackson and Frank Broyles were upstairs, and I was the sideline guy. And uh, two things about that. First of all, the, they were trailing Pat Dye and Auburn at the half, and uh, Bear came out. And that picture that you're talking about, uh, some Birmingham News Herald guy, uh, photographer, took the picture and then sent it to me. And I got cheeky and I thought, well, I'll send this to Coach Bryant's office through his sports information director. And by golly, he got it and signed it and returned it to me. And I treasure that photo. So at halftime, he's coming out and they're training. And the photo is of me talking to Coach, telling him, Coach, uh, we, we need to stop and do this halftime interview. And he said, son, they're about to kick off. I can't get as low as he did. Yeah. And I said, coach, trust me on this. They're, they're not going to kick off until we do this interview. <laughs> well, all right, be quick about it. So that's the photograph. And then uh, by rehearsal, uh, they had had me go under the north stands at Legion Field in Birmingham. And by now, it, the sun had set and it was getting dark. <clears throat> and with two minutes to go in the game, uh, the uh, Alabama had come back, and then they're not comfortably in the lead. So I head down there with security, and to get me stationed. And the camera guys with with me, and now it's almost total darkness. And uh, Chuck Howard, who was producing the game, said, "Vern, are you there?" And I said, "Yes." He said is your camera guy there? And I said, yes, he is. And he said, well, I can't see you. I said, well, there's no light guy here. And he said, what? I said, there is no lighting technician here to light this. And he said, oh my God, he's stronger than that. And meanwhile, I can now hear the clumping of feet as Bryant and his security is coming through and they're approaching and Chuck said, is Coach Bryant there yet? I said, he's on the way. I can vaguely make out his, his. – and he said, where's the GD lighting technician? I said, Chuck, I don't know. He's not here. And he got very vivid in his language. And it was just going to my headset. Mm -hmm. but something about we pay $19 million a year for this effing thing. And <laughs> we can't get an effing technician there to light the effing scene. And my, now – Coach Ryan walked up and he said, you ready? <laughs> so I've got videotape of it. The entire <laughs> post-game interview took place in complete darkness. Oh, man. What a nightmare. 